Hi everyone, my name is Ben Reutel Ward. I'm a bassoonist and I'm a member of the Lucerne Festival Contemporary Leaders. And I'm very happy to be joined today to have a short conversation with Lawrence Dunn, who is a composer based in the UK and is one of the composers that we've commissioned to write a new work for the second annual Lucerne Forward Festival. So Lawrence, thanks so much for joining me today. Oh, thanks, Ben. So can you just start by telling us a little bit more about yourself as a composer and maybe some things that you're interested in in exploring in your music? I began uh, as a musician um, at Trinity College of Music as a junior um, and then later went to Cambridge and most recently was uh, studying with Bryn Harrison at Huddersfield. I mean, I've always composed music and improvised, but um, uh, really kind of in the last decade that I've sort of tried to take it pretty seriously. I'm often interested in kind of uh, modal mixtures and often just just modes. So, you know, justly intoned um, uh, modal mixtures. <laughs> it's different from totally chromatic, which is sort of like smearing harmony away, you know, whereas when you, you start being interested in mode and, and triad or superimpositions of triads and so on, you, you start being interested in, in harmony itself, you know, the modulation and so on. But I think that was what was part of why I was attracted to Ligeti, I mean, all through my, you know, life really ever since I heard it when I was a, a teenager. I mean, I think I think I heard the Ligeti violin concerto in, I want to say something like 2003. Ligeti has always been like an incredibly um, potent, influence on me. So your work will be premiered on November 19th in the concert hall at the KKL in Lucerne. And this is part of our program that is called In Search of Ligeti's Lost Melody. And this is a program that's built around the Ligeti Violin Concerto with our guest artist Patricia Kopachinskaya performing. And she had this idea to build a program around this melody that occurs at the beginning of the second movement of the Violin Concerto, this very simple folk-like melody, because she found traces of this melody in other works of Ligeti's. And so she had this idea to build this program around searching for that melody. And we're very excited that a part of what we're doing is we're commissioning new works that will also be responding to that melody um, from yourself and from another of other number of other composers. So could you just talk about, um, you know, when you saw this call for commissions and this prompt, like what kind of ideas did that spark for you and what made you interested in pursuing this project? The music of Richard Carter, um, this um, folk tune, what it represents in Ligeti, I think is still kind of escapes total uh, um, encapsulation in words. You know, Ligeti was an exile. Um, he was somebody who was like incredibly Hungarian despite being in exile. Um, so, I mean, you know, one interpretation could be a kind of longing for some absent home that he was, uh, you know, denied the ability to live in. Um, but I think that's too simplistic in some ways. I mean, I don't know. It's, it's anyway, it certainly contains all of these elements. So anyway, for me as a teenager, you know, this was a point of fascination and, so when I saw that uh, Patricia, who's playing I Love, and I, I think I saw her play the, the Ligeti Violin Concerto in London a few years ago, um, uh, I was like, oh, well, this is a logical thing to do with, with the, uh, the, the Violin Concerto in any case, to, to make a kind of thread from this second movement to the other parts of Ligeti's oeuvre where this, this material shows up. Uh, but then, you know, to try to commission other music to, to do some of this work as well, I thought was interesting. I think for, for composers today, Ligeti represents the, the sort of um, the paradigm of inclusion, a kind of a, a total curiosity about all music and a kind of willingness to try to engage positively with, you know, the entire world of, uh, of music and not... And not to sort of compromise yourself artistically in, in so doing, but to really try to take it seriously. So can you, can you tell me a little bit more about this piece that you've composed and what people can expect to hear as part of the program? Yeah, the way that I thought about it was <laughs> um, uh, I kind of wanted to do some things that Ligeti does and then do a bunch of things that he, has, he, he also doesn't do. So in the piece, you have kind of two groups. Um, there's... A piano group, so the piano plus the bass clarinet and flute. 
um, and the and there's like a snare drum being played with brushes. It's kind of like jazz brushes. Uh, it's this group is playing the ligeti melody harmonized in this sort of slightly wonky circle of fifths way. Um, so everything's kind of cycling around the circle of fifths, and then the the melody is gradually being transposed up by semitones each each cycle. And then there's another group of instruments who are kind of metrically disaligned, who are playing other um, melodies all harmonized in kind of close harmony. So there's this kind of harmonic uh, um, uh, um, complexity to the whole thing because you've got two whole sets of processes all under, being undergone at the same time. But the idea is that uh, the whole thing should just become this kind of like water. Um, I, I think the idea I, I really wanted to do is to just kind of put the melody underwater, um, kind of submerge it in some ways, and so that you're just kind of building this, this great pool of harmonic material that's just kind of swirling around. For me, Ligeti is air and, and fire. So I don't know, I was kind of maybe going, like trying to find the, the, the sort of elemental opposite. One of, the, one of the first things I wanted to do is to, you know, go to places which Ligeti would be un, uninterested or, you know, maybe a little kind of, yeah, standoffish about going to, just to kind of, just to kind of like turn the whole thing around a little bit. But, but on the other hand, like there are elements of the, the music that I've written that are quite Ligeti and it's almost like homage or tribute music. But I'm also trying to, I don't know, like digest the, 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 the metier of, of Ligeti's um, yeah. writing and yeah. turned it into something that's kind of being pushed through my own sensibilities as well, mm. Mm. Uh, which is kind of presumptuous, but I think, I don't know how else to, <laughs> I don't know how else to do it. Sure. Yeah. Sure. Well, well, Lawrence, I, I'm, I have to say, I'm, I'm really, really excited to get to bring this piece to life. You know, it was a, a pleasure getting, getting to hear your music and getting to know you here now and I can't wait till we do it in person and, and I'm, I'm really excited for this program and, and for your part in it. So thank you so much for taking the time and, and for sharing these insights into into Ligeti and into your music as well. Oh, thank you, Ben.